let's take a look at some more examples of trigonometric integrals involving sine and cosine. But unlike our previous examples, this time the powers of sine and cosine are going to be strictly even. We're not going to have any odd powers whatsoever. Uh, you can see in this one that we have a sine squared. Using the Pythagorean identity, we could switch that to a 1 minus cosine squared, but that doesn't really put us in a situation better than having a sine squared. So cosine squared is not more preferable than sine squared. And we really can't borrow uh, a sine to do a u substitution because that only leaves one sine left. And to transition using the Pythagorean identities, you have to have an even amount. So what does one do when you have an even amount of sines and cosines? Because sines, we have two of them. And cosines, you don't see any cosines. And that's because their power is zero there. It's an even number. So instead of the Pythagorean identity, when you have only even powers, what you want to instead use are the half angle identities for sine and cosine. So in particular, sine squared equals 1 half times 1 minus cosine of 2x. And cosine squared equals 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2x. The reason why this is useful here is if you have um, only even powers, the sine squared here or the cosine squared here, you have an exponent. This will translate to some linear combination using cosine of 2x. Cosine of 2x is much more preferable to integrate than sine squared or cosine squared of x because you no longer have the exponent. You just actually have a period change, which in terms of u substitution is pretty simple to take care of. So we're going to replace the sine squared the bounds on the definite integral will be unfaced here. Uh, the sine squared we're going to switch to become a 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x dx right here. Uh, and the idea here is that if you have to integrate something like cosine of 2x dx, well, you just do a very basic u substitution. u equals 2x, du equals 2dx. Oh, no, you don't have the 1 half. Oh, I had to put it in the wrong spot there. We need a 2. And so the 1 half goes in front there. And so then when you integrate that, you're going to end up with a 1 half. The antiderivative of cosine is sine, sine of 2x plus a constant. And so if, you're, if, you're off, if, you're, if your period change is off there, just divide by that constant that you need here. And so cosine of 2x is fairly simple to integrate. Um, integrating this, we get 1 half. The antiderivative of 1 becomes an x. The antiderivative of negative cosine of 2x, like we saw a moment ago, will be negative 1 half sine of 2x. And then we evaluate this from 0 to pi. Now, the good news is when you plug in the 0, both the x and the sine will go to 0, so they'll just disappear. That's not exactly true when you plug in a pi. Uh, now, if you plug in pi, if we just put all the, all the things in here, we're going to get 1 half. So we get pi minus 1 half sine of 2 pi and then minus 0 minus 1 half sine of 0. Like I was mentioning a moment ago, sine of 0 is equal to 0. Of course, 0 is equal to 0. Now, sine of 2 pi is also equal to 0. So most of this stuff is just going to cancel out. Um, and then you take the 1 half times the pi. We see the area under this curve is going to be pi over 2. So just want to illustrate in this example that if you only have an even number of sines or cosines, that's okay. Use half angle identities. If one of the powers is odd, you can use the Pythagorean identity. Uh, let's take another example, look at another example of this. This time we have sine to the fourth. Uh, how, do, how do we deal with such a thing like this? Well, we have to take it step by step. If you have only even powers, that means you can factor the exponents by taking out a two, in which case you get sine squared squared dx. And using the half angle identity we saw on the previous slide, uh, sine squared, you can make a substitution there. Sine squared is 1 half 1 minus cosine of 2x. And this is going to be squared here. Uh, with those half angle identities we saw on this slide, they do look very similar, right? Sine squared equals 1 half 1 minus cosine 2x, cosine squared equals 1 half, 1 plus cosine 2x. Uh, both the sine squared and the cosine squared will get a 1 half, 1 plus or minus cosine 2x. It's important to keep track of where does the minus sign go. Well, the thing that you'll notice is that cosine squared gets the plus and sine squared gets the minus. It's like cosine likes himself and hates sine. So sine's the negative one, yikes, pessimist. Cosine's in love with himself, sort of a narcissist type of tendency cosine has at times. 
So sine squared becomes one half, one minus cosine, cosine of two x. And do be careful with your penmanship here. When you write cosine of two x, you wanna make sure it looks like a two x and not a cosine squared x. It's a very common mistake. You can put parentheses around it to help you out there. Although depth by parentheses is a, is a concern we have to have here. If we FOIL this thing out, the 1 half squared uh, will become a 1 fourth. I'm going to put that in front of the integral. And then when you FOIL out the 1 minus cosine 2x squared, you end up with 1 minus 2 cosine 2x plus cosine squared of 2x, like so. Let me fix that. Now, the, I could integrate 1. I can integrate cosine 2x, but how do you integrate cosine squared of 2x? That's the issue there. It turns out we want to use the half angle identity again, uh, but this time we have to use the cosine one. And so if we do that, we'll integrate the one and the cosine of 2x in just a moment. So just copy down what we had before, one minus two cosine 2x. And so for the cosine squared of 2x, That'll become by the half, half angle identity one half, you get another one half there, one plus, remember cosine loves himself, cosine of two two x, that is a four x. You're gonna double the angle one more time. And so now we're in a situation where we can integrate cosine of four x, very similar to cosine of two x. There are some like terms you could combine right here because there's a one and a three halves you combine combined together. I'm just going to hesitate to do that in just a second. We'll just integrate it. Um, the integral of 1 fourth, well, the, the, co the coefficients out in front. Now we have to integrate 1. I don't want an integral sign now. Integrate the 1. That becomes an x. Integrate the negative 2 cosine 2x. That becomes a negative cosine, sorry, negative sine of 2x, like so. And then you integrate the 3 halves. That'll be a 3 halves x. And then here we have to integrate a one half cosine of four x. That's actually gonna give us a one eighth cosine of four x. Sorry, I didn't change that again. Uh, one eighth sine of four x, like so, plus a constant. I kind of botched that last one, so let's be a little bit careful what's going on. Uh, so if you consider the antiderivative of cosine of four x, by basic u substitution, you're saying that u equals 4x, du equals 4dx. I don't have the 4, so put it out in front by dividing by 1 4. That's where the 1 4 came from. And then the antiderivative would give you 1 4. Uh, the antiderivative of cosine is sine, sine of 4x plus a constant. Uh, why a 1 a 1 8 right here? Well, that's because this 1 half distributes onto the two pieces. Oh, my pen's not working there. There we go. The one half distributes there, so you get one half times a fourth. And so now let's distribute this one fourth through to all these pieces. But we can also combine like terms right here. Uh, oh, where did I get that three halves there? I'm totally sorry. That should be a one half. Uh, one half times one is one half. Integrate that to get an x there. Uh, I think I know what I did there. I was already combining the x and the one half x together. My apologies there. So you end up with, when you add the x and the one half x together, you get, that's where the three halves came from. Times that by one fourth, you get three eighths x. Uh, then we're gonna get a negative one fourth sine of two x. And then lastly, we end up with a one thirty second sine of 4x plus a constant there. And so I uh, made a few mistakes along the way. I was able to pick them up. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing for our viewer here. Uh, but we get our antiderivative just like the following. Whenever you have even powers of just sines or cosines, you're gonna have to use the half angle identities to help you with your uh, antiderivative there.